was at school, I had to choose a foreign language to study. It was either French, which everyone did, or German, which no one did. And just based on a whim, and maybe because my brother also studied it, I chose to do German. And little did I know that that decision would determine the course of my life for the next 10 years. I studied German throughout the entirety of my high school days, and I even did it at university, studying German literature and history. I even spent a year at the University of Vienna. For a large chunk of my life, my days were dominated by endless hours of reading academic texts in creaky wood-panelled libraries. But that was a long time ago now. And I'm starting to worry that I'm losing my German. Not that I retained anything that I learned from like the history lectures and like the, you know, sort of super weird modern literature theories, but at least I was pretty good at the speaking part. So when we found out that Ribs is leaving London to go back to the home of the free and the bald eagles, you know, the three of us, Ribs, me and Leah, we decided that we were due a lad's holiday. I convinced the boys that Berlin was the place to go, not only because I've never been there, but also it would be a chance for me to brush up on my German and finally put a face to the names and places that plagued me for so long during my university days. Whilst I was squishing my seat on our flight to Berlin, I thought about what it would be like to shoot streets, to shoot street photography in Berlin, because I've always got the impression from Germans and from German street photography YouTube in general that Germans don't take kindly to street photographers. Oh God, what's that on my hat? Ew. Ugh. Apparently it's quite normal for disgruntled members of the public to stop you in your tracks and and demand that you delete your photos right there on the spot. And it's little wonder why, if you take some of these historical things into perspective. Germany, and Berlin in particular, has undergone some radical social and economical changes. You know, as a street photographer, what interests me most is the fact that this country lived not through one, but two brutal regimes that strip citizens of all sense of privacy. The Gestapo and the Stasi were the real life thought police. You could literally be branded a criminal and an enemy of the state for just having the wrong personal thoughts. During the days of the GDR, it's estimated that one in seven East Berliners were an informant for the Stasi or worked directly with the Stasi. That means it was highly likely that your own family was spying on you. Today, we're monitored by Google and Facebook. While still terrifying, for most of us, the worst thing that happens is that we end up spending too much on Amazon. You know, the Stasi would literally steam open letters, private letters, and drill holes in people's flats so that they could listen into their private conversations. Bear in mind, the Berlin Wall literally fell just 30 years ago, which is not that long ago. That means there are at least two generations who can remember these dark, dark days as if it was yesterday. Since then, Germans have fought extremely hard to maintain their privacy. Germans famously protested and succeeded in stopping Google Street View cars from taking images of residential areas. So if you use Google Maps and Street View, you're just gonna see a huge blank space over Germany. However, I wasn't gonna let this deter me. Would they possibly give me a pass if they knew that I was a tourist? Or would they force me to delete my photos once they heard me speak German? After we unpacked our bags and settled in the hostel, I loaded my Olympus OM-1 with a fresh roll of Color Plus 200 and we hit the streets of Berlin to find out if Berlin really does hate street photographers. So first impressions of Berlin, graffiti, posters, grunge. Abandoned crumbling buildings, yeah. kind of like Shoreditch here in London, but like the entire city. In order to test this hypothesis fairly, I was sure to not alter my shooting style in any way. I wasn't going to cheat and, you know, sort of hide the fact that I was taking photos. If anything, I was going to try and make it more obvious that I was taking photos. Now, I could drag this video out and take it past the eight minute mark before letting you know the answer. But in reality, we found the answer out pretty quickly. And the truth, at least in my opinion, Berliners don't really care about street photographers.
feel any difference in the way that we were sort of received by the members of the public. It felt like shooting in London, I'm not gonna lie. I was met with either indifference or smiles and laughter, which is pretty much the same here in London. In fact, I had one girl enjoy the fact that I took her picture so much that she wanted me to take another picture of her. I mean, the reality of the situation was that I actually wanted her to move out of the frame, but she kind of just stood there. Out of courtesy, I took a photo, um, but she was so happy that I took a photo that she came over to me, looked at my LCD screen, and I was like, oh, do another one. I don't like the look of the mask. I made a point to be very conspicuous with my camera. Um, you know, for example, with this young couple in the park, you know, I deliberately got closer and closer with every shot that I took. And as you can see, like, they're perfectly fine. They were even laughing about it. Or in Safe Light, which is a film camera shop in Berlin. Um, absolutely awesome shop, really cool. They've got their lab in the back, which, you know, which has like an, which you can see into, and you can just see them like scanning. It looks, it was really, really cool. Yeah, I was snapping away. There were two girls in the shop um, and I was just snapping away. I took at least six photos of them and they had, they had no problem with it. Um, like I was very, very, very close quarters, you know, probably as close as I am to this mirror, if not closer. And I took at least six photos of them. Do I have any photos of it? Uh, no, I don't because I uh, misloaded the film in my camera. So I have no, yeah, the film didn't catch onto the sprockets, so. Very annoyed because it was such a cool scene. But thankfully, I took this iPhone shot. By the way, Safe Light, if you're watching this, you do know that you have like a really, like a fully operational, like, like a, I think it's M3 or M2, in like incredible condition, sitting next to like, with a 35 mil Sumilux on a shelf next to an open door, like, and you have like no security. Like, are you guys aware of that? Like. Like, are people just that nice and like honorable in Germany? In so many ways, Berlin is a very different city to London. They bear their scars on show for the world to see. The abandoned buildings, the Holocaust Memorial, the countless memorials and reminders of their past sins are built into the architecture of the city. And this ongoing act of reconciliation with their past has a name, Die Vergangenheitsbewältigung, or in English, coming to terms with the past. In the UK, the British atrocities throughout history are wiped out from textbooks, leaving only their triumphs. In British schools, we're not taught about how the British sucked its colonies dry. In fact, the British tend to paint their colonial past as if it were for the benefit of its colonial subjects. In Germany, they hold their hands up and they remember every single day that, yeah, we were really, really bad. Despite this difference, I must say that I felt right at home in Berlin. I think the reason for this is that of the Berliners that we interacted with, I felt a similar energy to the one that is sort of integral and that my London and Love project tries to encapsulate and tries to evoke. And that is, it's that cold aloofness, you know, on a busy commute on the tube that, you know, that tourists always complain about, that people from outside of London complain about. It's almost that honesty, you know, that, that brutal honesty that I'm only gonna be your friend if I actually like you kind of thing, which I really, really like. <laughs> I appreciate that. But there is one thing. I do have one issue with you, Berlin. We've got to talk about this. So we kind of fucked up because we didn't bring any money. In the market. Everything is cash here. What's up, Berlin? Berlin some bullshit. Nah, I'm kidding. I like Berlin, but this cash list or this cash thing, like, come on, bro. Bro, bro. We have no cash. My net worth is all in Bitcoin, and I'm out here trying to spend USD. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, we take that for granted, man, in London. Hell yeah. Where the, you know, in London, you pay everything with, with your card, but here, everything's cash. You would think, like, because of COVID, yeah. everything kind of switched over to card, but, you know, is what it is. Very lucky. Nobody wants to spend those fees. So, it's kind of good, though. Doesn't mean, means that we're not spending bullshit money on bullshit but yeah and that's because in berlin cash is king everywhere is cash only pretty much everywhere there are a few places i take card but it's hard to find because aside from photography good food was a top priority on our agenda the jamaican patty but not jamaican it's south american version. 
And that's one of those, it's like, I think it's potato. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. Dude, this looks delicious. Look at that. I must admit, I was quite shocked to find so much good food and coffee in Berlin. What's that? It's B6. B6. As you can see, it comes in a nice little cup here and it gives you a little taster. So, gotta do the, the little roll. What are we getting? This is a sun drop. They give you a lot of coffee. Sun drop yeah. from Brazil. Pardon the slip. How much was that? Almost every meal would be ruined because the waiters would be like, sorry, cash only. Like, come on guys, paying by card is like the bare minimum of modern civilization today. You know, we asked about like, what the hell's going on? Why is everything cash only? What is this oppression about? And basically, it's all to do with privacy. They don't want other people knowing about what they spend their money on. And paying by cash is their way of maintaining their privacy. Which to me is kind of weird, because I mean, Germans, you walk around with your pee pee and your boobies out in public, you know, with all your, your nut wanderung and your sort of, you know, you guys are pretty, you guys are pretty chilled with getting your bits out in public. But you won't let your bank know that you bought a loaf of bread from the supermarket. After our four short days, it was time to head home. He, I tried to get caught. Me Every too. time he was like too close, I was like, yo, this is it. In fact, I would move away from him so that <laughs> if he got yelled at, I didn't get yelled at too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're going down alone. That's solidarity, though, isn't it? <laughs> I would have helped you once you got arrested, but. <laughs> How about you, Leo? How'd you find it? Yeah, no, same thing here, man. Just, uh, it depends on the type of street photography you do, really, I feel. Yeah. yeah. We didn't really. You blast somebody in the face with yeah. flash, like with we, this thing. We didn't do any happen. like Bruce Gilder style, so. Yeah, Bruce like, Gilder. So. I would pay money to see <laughs> him out here. Again after it. Favorite part of Berlin? Go. Uh, Thai food, fried chicken, on coconut curry. <laughs> I think that's a mutual thing though, that's not fair. <laughs> Helmet, Helmet Newton Museum was banging though, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like, for a dude that only photographs naked white chicks, like... He knew what he was doing. Yeah, I got respect. He, he nailed that. Well, he was probably, he wasn't the first ever in the yeah. world, but he, he was the first like legit one. So yeah. I guess you can't... Can't show that. that. Sorry, can't show that. I don't want to get demonetized, but <laughs> if you come here, check out the Helmet Newton uh, exhibition. Yeah. Yeah, and for someone who photographed the same subject over and over again, I feel like there was enough variation that I, it was yeah. interesting to see yeah. just the same kind of thing over and over again. It still looked cool, but uh, the dude was like a photographer's photographer. Had every camera, absolutely, killing it with the, with all the contact sheets and the whole swag. <laughs> and he had that fucking look with the, with the fucking vest and the Amen. little hat. And whilst I didn't get the negative responses on the street that I was expecting, I did leave with some awesome memories, with some awesome friends, and some of my favorite images that I've taken anywhere. Oh yeah, we actually got the... You know what I'm saying? Yo, imagine trying to climb that shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, they decorated it, got all this art on it, you know what I'm saying? Coffee and food. Oh yeah, sorry. Freedom! Don't sorry, sorry, freedom. They're useless. Stop with this political... Sorry, thing. I need to breathe in, breathe in my freedom there. Hey, yo, uh, cool. oh, that's cute. Look at that. Mm. Say hi. Brand new Air Force One? Air Force One.